Iran general says U.S. will definitely regret it if threats continue. The chief of Iran's powerful Revolutionary Guard warned that it will retaliate against American and Israeli commanders if the U.S. continues to threaten top Iranian generals. I warn them to withdraw from this field, said General Hassan Salam. I want to say Salami, Salami, told state television, adding that if they do not, they will definitely regret it. The head of Iran's judiciary, Ibrahim Rasi, vowed to bring Soleimani's killers to trial and to and for punishment for this terrible crime. So yeah, the Iranians, I guess this started because an American was overheard making some comments about um, Iran. Killing more generals? Uh, uh, yeah, so a guy named um, Brian Hook, who's a U.S. special representative for Iran, mm. he was uh, speaking to a Saudi-owned Pan-Arabian newspaper at the Davos Economic Forum recently, and um, he was quoted as saying, you know, about the guy who's replacing Soleimani, mm -hmm. whose name is Gahani. He was talking about him and he said, if he follows a similar path like Soleimani of killing Americans, he will meet the same fate. Any attacks against American personnel or interests in the region will be met with a decisive response. Uh, and we will hold the regime and its proxies accountable for any attacks on Americans or American interests in the region. So he made this statement to the Saudi-owned newspaper. They're responding to it saying, you better stop threatening us or you're going to regret it. I actually support this this type of um, action from United States. I don't support most of United States foreign policy in the region. It's too, way too much intervention. But this is a great alternative to just take out the generals. Like this is why I kind of like the, ta the taking out of Qasem Soleimani. It's the best way to respond to Iran's aggression without actually going out to full out war. Like, especially because these generals are just sitting back in Tehran as not Qasem Soleimani, but the rest of them. And they're just sending their foot soldiers and all these poor people that they have brainwashed to die on their behalf. So if you just like, if they say like, oh my God, this they're, they're going after us. Right, they're gonna. They might take us out. This is gonna scare them. Like this is getting personal for them. Like this is like, uh, this is not just like oh losing in battle. Like no, you could actually die. Right, this, and I, and I like them to. Again, people might be like, oh Armin, you're against capital punishment, but you're again, but you're for taking out these generals. Yeah, that's not capital punishment. You're in war with these kind uh, with this country, and I'm 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 for killing out terrorists in the in on the field in the battle. Uh, with a drone or something those are i'm completely for that i'm not okay with killing the terrorists if they've been arrested if they're ha if they're handcuffed and they're they have no weapon or anything i'm not okay with com you know too much background noise rivka but you mean you move around sorry but i'm not okay with capital fun pun i'm not okay with capital punishment when uh you know they can't when they're not actually fighting but yeah this is this is this guy is like Oh, there's going to be consequences. Be very afraid, Americans. Because the reason why I'm saying be very afraid is because they're afraid. They're afraid and they're like, they want to, They want you to stop killing them. And I think like, no, this is actually the one of the few foreign policies by Trump that I support. Because it doesn't involve going out into all right war. It's much better reaction than sending 5,000 troops, 3,000 troops, 10,000 troops here over there. No, just send a drone or send one tactical guy with an RPG or something. Take out a car here. Take out a car over there. Assassinate this general over here. That's so much cheaper. So much less to the ta to yes taxpayer so much more devastating to a country like to islamic republic of iran and so much more effective because they care about their because they don't care the, the the sheep that they sent to war for them to die they don't care about those lives they care about their own lives so even though it's l much less expensive it's going to be more effective so yeah i support the Un united states on this specifically well, the Iranians also said, by the way, to them, you know, saying you better watch out. 
They also said that if the U.S. if the United States didn't stop threatening, that Iran's reaction would be completely different from the past. Yeah. So I'm not sure what that even means. Like, it almost sounds like you better stop it or we're going to really do something. Yeah. They're different. Nev they're never specific. They're never specific. Right. They, 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 do, they don't want to be specific so that they have, like, options. Uh, right. De Derek is saying it's not going to be good if this, if this S continues. Many will die and Iran does not stand a chance in hell. I'm tired of endless wars. All that money spent on bombs could have fixed our infrastructure and healthcare many times over. Yeah, but this is the better way. Uh, this is a better way to do this. That like this. Hey, paper. Uh, this is a better. Sorry. This, I can't. I, Rivko, I know. I'm sorry, but I can't read it. Go ahead. Yeah. Keep going. So uh, this you're saying, Derek is saying, oh, this is endless wars and bombs and stuff. We could have spent. Well, this is the way to do it. This is the way to do it without the w bombs and the endless wars, right? This might, first of all, no, nobody's being bombed. You're just assassinating their top generals. And it actually might, might end wars because now it's getting, hitting too close to home. Like this is the, you know, a lot of people say like, oh, World War Three is coming when they're killing the Qasem Soleimani. Nothing happened. Nothing happened because Iran knows they can't go out in a direct head-to-head -head war you know, full-on combat with the United States. They could only do asymmetrical warfare. And now United States is like, okay, um, you want to do a And Iran does very well at asymmetrical warfare. They're not going to be able to defeat the United States at like full-on collision. So United States is responding in a similar way. They're like, you know what? We're not just a giant military. We are also good at covert operations. We could do that as well if you want to do that. And now it's hurting them at, at much higher level than they anticipated. So this is, I think, might be the most effective way at responding to Iran without actually very expensive troops and bombing out entire cities and stuff. So yeah, this might be a good alternative. All right, what are you going to say, Rifka? Sorry. I was just going to say that I think for some people in the United States, the issue might be should the United States military be in the business of assassinating people? And who gets to make those decisions if you're not bringing it to Congress? I think that that was some discussion I've heard about from people. So I don't necessarily disagree, and I'm certainly not a pacifist, mm. but I just know that I've heard that discussion from some people. Yeah, and, and that kind of goes back to that authorization to use terrorism... Uh, to use force against terrorism so it's kind of a blank check hmm. so that's some of the discussion i think that i'm hearing from people to some degree on this side like that's a know. fair discussion i'm just saying compared really compared to going out and bombing like with baghdad or removing saddam uh, or full-on war i think this is a better alternative you know and yeah. you could we could argue the details of the best process of doing that, but I think this is a better way of responding to Iran's aggression than a full-on war. I you know, but yeah, you're right. Those are good discussions to have. Uh, Vabe have is saying Iran should stop killing its protesters and stop lecturing the U.S. Uh, Chris is saying, I think this is just going to wind up being a Cold War 2.0. So instead of just World War Two or Three. Uh, she's saying Cold Cold War 2.0, lots of threats, but no real action. Yeah, I, I hope so. Um, yeah, actually, that's a very good point, Chris. This, a lot of people are comparing what's going to happen between the United States and Iran, uh, comparing it to World War II and saying it's going to start World War III. But I think a more closer comparison would be the Cold War between the United States and Russia. The difference is, the main difference between this and the Cold War is, is that the Cold War, in the Cold War, United States had a very good branding and advertising as a competing ideology against the communists. So the com so it wasn't just, so both sides understood that this is not just like military might that wins the battle, but it's also an ideological battle. And United States won that battle, not, not just because of its military might, but because it won the ideological fight. A lot, of, a lot of people in communist countries looked at the way that people in capitalist countries were living, and they were like, yeah, we want that. 
So they won that ideological battle. But the, the problem is because of all this PC nonsense these days, um, United States cannot, is, you can, a lot of people are not going into an ideological fight with the jihadists. That and also I think what uh, would have worked as an ideological fight with, uh, with this Islam is like Iran is not just good at covert operations and also asymmetrical warfare with also a lot of networks around the Middle East. But what Iran also is very good at is at the brainwashing and at the ideological battle like it all the they know the people there and they have a lot of ideological influences on the people there. they have all them uh, re religious leaders that tells people what they need to hear uh, and the counter to that should have been should have been for united states to be on the side of instead of ca capitalism was the old branding that would worked and won the battle in this day and age it could have been united states being on the side of human rights for everywhere at all times in every country but they, they cannot use that branding, especially because they support dictators and they support Saudi Arabia. So whenever they mention human rights, they just sound like hypocrites, especially because the United States sold weapons to Saudi Arabia to jump and give any civilians and cause the greatest humanitarian crisis of our, of our lifetime. So if they talk about like, oh, we're on the side of human rights, yeah, like you go F yourselves, right? So no, so that, does, that branding doesn't work. But that would have been a perfect branding to fight against all these uh, um, terrorists if they wanted to be consistent with what they support, which they are not. Um, all right, so let me see what the top comment is. The top comment is by Phil. Why is it that whenever you see an Iranian general or imam giving a speech, they always look like they are requesting uh, or pro or requesting a proctology exam oh yeah. oh the finger the thing the finger thing in the air that's what the <laughs> okay okay all right so rifka do you want to add anything to that before we go to the next news no i think that um you actually hit it on the head with the the ideological battle like with the cold war i think that that's um really uh really a good point to make and that it's hard to talk about human rights when you're, you know, holding hands with the Saudis in more ways than one. The other thing that I think that Iran is doing is they know they can't necessarily hit the United States, but they can hit Israel and they can kill people in Israel. So that's also like constantly linked right. with their discussion, you know. So if they can't get us, well, they'll, we'll just get your friends. Right, we'll right. just kill your friends. It's, it's cl they're closer to us. By the way, we just got a yeah. super chat. We got a super chat from Chris. Five dollars super chat. Chris, uh, the super chat by Chris is saying, "When I get my taxes, you guys are getting a cool hundred because you're so awesome." Ah, oh, thank you so much. Thank Thanks. you, Chris. Chris is a consistent supporter of Atheist Republic and Secular Judaism. That's so kind. Thank you, Chris. All right, let's. Atheists are under attack in many places. If they were Christians, their voices would be heard. If they were Jews, their voices would be heard. If they were Muslims, their voices would be heard. But they are atheists, and not many seem to be listening. Let's make it difficult for them to ignore us. We have built a global community, and now we are tearing down geographic, cultural, and language barriers so we can find each other and support each other. In the last decade, we have built the largest atheist community in the world. Now we're doing the same in other languages. With your help, we have started Atheist Republic in Persian and Arabic. انضميت مؤخرا لأسرة Atheist Republic وحيصير عندي بودكاست باللغة العربية. As we grow, we can dedicate more time, staff, and resources to start doing the same in Spanish, Portuguese, Malay, Bengali, Urdu, Hindi, and other languages. We are providing community, support, informative content, and amplifying the voices of those who need protection, especially in countries where people feel isolated simply for their lack of belief. We want to be there for them, and we are only getting started. Help us get there. Check in the description for ways you can support our projects.